Hey, what's up you guys? So today we're going to do more channel reviews. The previous one has been quite a success. I feel good about helping you and you learn something. So let's do more. Some of you have said that the reviews are too short in the previous one. I just want to clarify that I cannot go too in depth as it requires a response from the YouTuber themselves. So sometimes if you read the comments below, you might just see more advice and suggestions. I have quite a lot of submissions. So this is going to take some time to go through them all. Apologies in advance if I haven't got to yours yet. Okay, so the first one is The Spark. Yep, this is it. The Books Note Air 3C. Let's get into it. Hey friends, Mark from The Spark here, good to have you with me. I think this channel is pretty well done. Audio is good, video quality is good, niche is good. Overall, it is a good channel and that is reflected in the number of subscribers he has gained. The views he is getting are pretty good too, to be honest. You can see quite a number of them are above 1000 views and that's massive for a channel of his size. I also like some of the intro in his videos. They are all different. They are creative and it works. All right, so most of the points I've got so far kind of points to a channel that has done everything right. And to be fair, he is doing things right, at least for the things he can control, like video and audio quality. So it sounds like I have nothing to help here, but I do have a few things to point out that I think I can help. First, let's talk about audio volume. Audio quality is good in general. However, there are some videos I watch where I can barely hear what he is saying. The way I tested this is I opened up two tabs, one his video and another mine. Then I switched back and forth trying to see if I needed to increase my volume on my computer. And most of the time, I have to increase the volume when watching his videos. I don't exactly know the reason why without troubleshooting his equipments, but I reckon it has something to do with either the device he's using or he could be recording outside so it is harder to capture the sound. Or it could be that the video editing software he used may just have produced low quality audio. What I might suggest here is to run through the audio file through Levelator, available for Windows and Mac then use that output file instead. Level later will adjust the decibels accordingly and 95% of the time, it will fix the audio. If that doesn't work, then you may need to inspect the level layer you're using. I know you have a proper microphone like this one in one of your videos, Perhaps use that and see if you still have the same problem. If your viewers can't really hear you, then that's a big turn off and you don't want that. All right, next is a minor one, the thumbnails. When it comes to tech, I think that the thumbnail's main focused subject should be the tech item and not you. You can certainly be in it, but you shouldn't be the center of attention. Eyes should easily be drawn to the tech item. Like this one over here, I didn't know it was a review of a backpack. I just thought he was shouting in the neighborhood because he lost his backpack or something. If you take a look at the videos with the most views, you may notice that too. Some of the thumbnails do have faces in it, but it doesn't capture attention, either because he is pointing to the product or he is blurred in the background. Just check out MKBHD videos. The product is always the main focus and he only has his face as the main focus if he wants to share an opinion. The other thing I notice is wordings on thumbnails. Have a look at these two thumbnails. Notice how the last word is blocked out by the time frame. This makes it not readable and sometimes it can portray the wrong info thanks to obstructed text. So just be careful when placing words at the bottom of the thumbnail. If you really need to, keep it short and keep the bottom right corner of the thumbnail free from text. But other than that, I think the thumbnails are pretty good. Good color grading, clear, and there's a consistency to it. Okay, so good thumbnails must also come with good titles. I personally believe the title weighs more than a thumbnail and it is what makes you want to click. The thumbnail stops you from scrolling, but the title sparks the click. Now, when it comes to titles, keywords are super important for tech channels. Let me show you this here. I have been wrong about iPad OS. 
This title has changed now. Previously, when I first saw it, I think it was iPad OS versus Mac OS or something like that. So what's the issue here? Well, I know he is talking about iPad OS 18 and Mac OS Sequoia, which was just announced last week, and that's great. But those two words are not in the title. When the YouTube algorithm analyzes the video, it knows this video is about iPad OS, but it doesn't carry as much weight as iPad OS 18, which I'm pretty sure that's what people are searching for. So the number 18 is very important here. The same goes for Mac OS. There's a difference between Mac OS and Mac OS Sequoia. Having the exact name for the tech product or service to me is very important. Try to be specific and don't generalize. The other thing about titles, add some words to generate curiosity, but also keep the words short. For example, check out MKBHD when he reviews a product. M4 iPad Pro impressions. Well, this is awkward. What's awkward? I want to know. Google Pixel 8a impressions. Just get the 8. Why? Is 8a that bad? Rabbit R1. Barely reviewable. What? How bad is it? I better make sure I don't buy this. See where I'm going with this? A title that pops usually has a few words, but they are very impactful. Okay, just one more thing and this is just my preference, maybe. I always think that when you're unboxing a product, there's always this opportunity where you can create an ASMR style for it. I'm not an expert in this, but you can probably record your unboxing, then do a little more editing to it. Maybe enhance the unboxing sound and add more jump cuts to it to make it a little quicker. You know, something like that. Lastly, the tech niche is a very competitive niche. And the main thing you need to understand is you have to review the latest and the greatest products. What this usually means is you're probably going to be the early adopters. Tech review channels write on trends and latest products, at least what it is. So do keep that in mind when you're producing your next video. All right, to summarize this up real quick, fix the audio. Sometimes it just goes way too soft. Then your thumbnails. Create thumbnails that focus on the product you are reviewing and less about yourself. Also, be careful with how you place your text. Third, title. Make sure you give it the specific title of the product you are referring to. I think that's probably the most important one. Fourth, the nature of tech review channel is you have to be reviewing the latest products out there if you want to write the momentum. So make sure you know what you're getting into. Okay, next one, Lenny Tim. And I'm gonna teach you that in the next, let's say, 12 minutes. I've been drop shipping for a few years now and I'm gonna tell you a lot of things that other gurus are not gonna tell you. First of all, if you get sucked in by those big revenue numbers, let me tell you. First off, the good stuff. I personally think teaching viewers about entrepreneurship and business is amazing. I love this kind of stuff. I think it is lacking and it is hard to learn. So to have someone who can share their experience definitely helps a lot. Next, very clear business messages. I really enjoy it and audio is great as well. So thumbs up. Once again, a great channel, you know, I feel like there's something there, but it also feels like something is missing. Let's talk about the video quality. I think this part can be improved and I don't think this is a camera issue. This is more of a lighting issue. Have a look at this video here when recorded from home. It's blurry for some reason, but when you watch this video where it is filmed outside, it is perfectly fine. And the same goes for this as well when recorded besides the window, it is clear. So my guess is lighting and if that is indeed the issue, get a softbox that solves all the problems. I had the same issue as well and everything is perfect after I got a softbox. If you want to know what softbox I use, check out my Amazon link in the description. Another thing I want to touch on about the video quality is the use of stock footage. Now I only watched a few videos here and there so I don't know if this is the direction he is heading but if it is, I think it needs to be addressed. Check out this video. The transition between a high quality stock footage and the low resolution video of himself is quite disruptive. Like, it just doesn't feel right. On top of that, I think stock footage has been overused, at least in this video. 
And this day's stock footage just kind of kills the video's authenticity and it makes it kind of salesy. I mean, you can use it once in a while here and there, but once you use it way too much, like every few seconds, it becomes like a commercial video. Here's one thing I identified. This video here has little to no stock footage. It is just jump cuts and information dump. But check out the views. It is pretty high compared to your other videos, right? So that kind of tells me that people do enjoy what you share. They enjoy the information you give. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I'm referring to Lenny as a third person and sometimes as a first person. I just get a little worked up sometimes and imagine I'm talking directly to Lenny. but. You know who I'm talking to, right? Anyways, the next one, the titles, and I want to focus a little more on this. Let me be honest here, the titles are all over the place. Like sometimes it is about health, sometimes it is about business, then mindset, then making money, and even on Price is Right. I understand the channel is about business, entrepreneurship, making money, personal development, and YouTube, but Lenny, look. I'm just going to assume you're watching this. You need to pick one and revolve your story around it. To me, entrepreneurship, making money, personal development, those are all business related topics. So maybe you can group them up as one, then form a niche from there. But the title of your videos needs to be related to business. For example, how I built a million dollar business from scratch. That title itself involves business, entrepreneurship, personal development, and of course, making money. I would stay away from talking about YouTube. Take it from me. You do not want people to think your channel is talking about YouTube. It is hard to get out of it. You can still talk about it if YouTube is a module of your business though, but you need to be really careful. Once you get that down, then every title you make has to be related to business. If you want to talk about mindset, that's fine but tie it back to business and think of a creative way to title your videos. Don't say it is a mindset stuff though, that hardly gets clicked. One thing I want to also point out is making money videos. From my experience, if you want to teach people how to make money, the best way to get clicks is if your thumbnail has money symbols on it. Or even better, if you can back it up by showing proof. People love to see how much money you make for real. You don't have to show everything, but just giving them a slight hint can open up possibilities for them and it makes them want to watch your videos. Speaking of thumbnails, overall pretty good, especially the latest ones. The one feedback I can give is try and avoid reusing the same thumbnails. Like this two over here, it is the same thumbnail except for the background. I know YouTubers like Graham Stephan do this a lot where he reuses the same post in his thumbnails, but other elements in his thumbnail are very very different which makes it distinct enough from others. And finally, the biggest question I have here is what do you want to get out of this channel? The fact that you are asking for a channel review shows that you are not doing this for fun. You are serious about growing the channel. So what is it that you want to achieve from growing this channel? Is it part of a sales funnel? Is it to promote your product and services? Or maybe to raise awareness? Whatever it is, it is not clear to me which makes it hard for me to kind of advise what's next. Okay, summary time. First, video resolution. Make sure it is consistent throughout your channel. The latest video has low resolution, whereas the older ones are higher resolution. It shouldn't go backwards, it should move forward, so try to address that. If it is due to lighting, consider investing in a softbox or maybe switch to a different location when recording. Second, stock footage. Try not to use too much. The more you show yourself, the more authentic it feels. You are more than capable of capturing attention. Third, your niche. Have a think about what exactly is your niche and revolve your topics around it. I think it is a business niche, but I could be wrong. This is something only you can decide. Fourth, the title, which kind of ties back to your niche. Have a consistent title in every video release. Make it clear to your viewers. If it is about making money, say how much money you make. If it is about starting a brand new business from scratch, turn it into a story to share your experience step by step. It goes a lot deeper than that for sure, but I suggest starting from this first. And Lenny, 
feel free to reach out to me in the comments section or send me an email if you want to chat more. Okay, the next one is a special one, Blue Clarice. Second. And then I found another Black Butler character, this amazing Joker cosplayer. And we ended up becoming friends, obviously, because they're super cool. Their wig was amazing, and they will be performing in the Masquerade, which you will see. All right, so I deliberately chose this channel because this is very different from the ones I have previously reviewed. I have never reviewed a channel like this before, where the channel's focus is all about having fun. I mean, take a look. What do you see? All I see is someone who just enjoys and want to have some fun. Okay, but I know I still have to give proper feedback. I mean, she obviously wants to grow her channel as well, right? First, let's get the good stuff and basic stuff away. Video quality and audio quality. Two thumbs up for that. Very clear video, very clear audio. Keep that going. Next, your thumbnails. I think they work for a vlog channel. They have pretty much the same style, not a lot of tags, lots of elements. So I think you got the thumbnails right. Now, for the title and topics of your video. I think that's quite important. The anime niche is a funny one. There's a huge community for it, but it is also very niche. Having said that, the community is very strong in this one and they tend to stick together to support one another. So I guess the question for this channel is how to expand and reach out to a much wider audience. Just by looking at her channel, I did notice one thing. I don't know what characters or what anime she's cosplaying in. Now to be fair, I'm not the best person to talk about anime. I do watch them, but I don't watch all of them. I only know the popular ones, so I can only advise what I know. Judging from the videos on her channel, I feel like what viewers want to watch most are genuinely two things. One, how to make your favorite anime character costume, and two, a vlog video of the conventions you go to and videos of different awesome cosplayers. She probably did the second one right already. Some of her videos did give the experience of being in a convention, so that's great. What I do think helps her channel though is having her sew costumes. Now this is just my opinion. I think it is very time consuming to do a video and sew a costume. If it was me, there's no way I can do that. But for Blue Clarice, that might be different because she really is having fun. So my suggestion for your topics is to first start with just sewing up costumes. It doesn't even have to be complicated. You can start off with the easy, simple ones. The other topic you can do is really just vlogging your experience at conventions. Share more of those, give your viewers the feeling of being there with you and all the fun experiences they are missing. So that's the topic and direction. The next one is how you title those videos. First of all, use the convention name in your titles. You have this video with the word Chromacon in it, and that seems to have done well. Now compare that to this one over here that merely mentions Pokemon cosplay contest. What's the name of the contest here? The thing is, people tend to search for videos like this, and I think that's how you can first get discovered. Once your videos are discoverable by search, then maybe the algorithm learns that and will push more of your videos to this kind of audience. The next thing I suggest you should put in your title is the anime you're referring to followed by the character. So if you're making a costume of, I don't know, Yoruichi from Bleach, then have both Bleach and Yoruichi in the title. Then combine that with a crazy end product of the costume you made, like the one you have over here, to really blow this off. I think this is how it can work. A lot of effort for sure if you want to take this route. Alright, the next one I want to talk about is timing. Anime sort of comes in seasons. For example, Demon Slayer goes on for about 12 to 15 weeks per year. And during this 12 to 15 weeks, you can leverage on the popularity by sewing up their costumes or cosplaying as a character in it. I think it matters a lot these days, unless you're aiming for big everlasting anime like Dragon Ball or One Piece, then that's a different story. They are popular, but they are also highly saturated and competitive. And don't forget about up and rising anime as well. That can work too. If you can learn to time those and release your videos accordingly, you're basically uploading a trendy video and YouTube loves it. The good part is, you can even prepare beforehand if you know when the next season of a particular anime is going to begin. Now, in terms of consistency, 
I wouldn't think you'll be able to create new contents weekly given your type of content. So what I suggest is to do shorts then probably repurpose on TikTok and Instagram if you have the time. I feel like you have a unique story and you need to share your story more frequently and shorts is the way to go. The fact that you are doing vlog style videos makes this even easier. Maybe try doing one shots a week then maybe one long form video every three to four weeks. This keeps your channel going and makes it look alive, which is important to the YouTube algorithm. You can edit your shots or you can just do a simple video. It is up to you as long as you are doing this within your capability. All right, so that's that. Now, the final one I can think of is just to have fun. You're already having fun and I reckon you should not worry too much about views and subscribers at this point. Having fun on YouTube is rare. Most YouTubers are stressed out because of the numbers and I sincerely hope you don't fall into the trap. Create what you enjoy, love your journey and build your community one viewer at a time. That's actually what it takes to do a vlog style YouTube channel. It takes a lot of patience, which is why I do not want you to lose the fun thanks to some silly numbers. The anime community is extremely strong. Once they discover and love your personality, they'll stick around. Your only issue here is discoverability. So please be patient and don't lose that smile of yours in the process. Okay, a quick recap. First, thumbnails are great. Keep it up, you're doing a great job. Second, the type of content. I suggest sticking to sewing costumes and conventions. These two seem to work well for you and it is a good place to start. Third, title. Have the anime character and the anime name in the title of your videos. Try your best to leverage on popular and trending anime while people are searching for it. Fourth, consistency. Think about uploading shots weekly and long form videos every three to four weeks to keep your channel alive to the YouTube algorithm. And of course, have fun. I can't stress this enough. You have a special story. You're having fun, so don't look too deeply into the analytics and stress yourself out. It is not worth sacrificing what you enjoy for numbers. Okay, this is all guys for this round. I still have a fair bit more to go with the reviews, but I'll try to speed it up so hopefully I'll do another round next week. If you enjoyed this and would like to have your channel reviewed as well, make sure to sign up to my newsletter and keep an eye out for second round submission. You can sign up via the link in my description or in my pinned comment.